Today, the first thing I'm going to start with is I'm going to tackle this area here that I've, yesterday I, I um, pushed back the, the dark area here and along in here, but the lightest area is, is too light and too yellow. So I'm going to, I'm going to float a really dilute mix of uh, burnt sienna over that. I think that should take care of the issue, both the, the too yellow part of it and the, and the too light part. Probably going to be a little too dark, but that's okay. Well, actually, that's not bad. That might even be a little light still. A few little holidays here. Actually, I'm uh, darkening an area that should be left pretty light. Right in the belly, there's quite a bit of reflected light there, but I think it's fine. I didn't go all the way forward, and that's where it's the lightest right in here. That's pretty good. It's maybe still just a little light. This uh, saved white paper here between the, the two front legs has served its purpose. So I'm gonna paint a little bit of burnt sienna over that. I want to leave it quite a bit lighter than the, than the areas on either side of it, but I don't want it to be white paper. That's pretty good. I think I'll lift just a little bit of that. Good. One thing that I want to do today is to remove the masking fluid so that then I can I can see all of the, the saved areas and, and judge how good a job I did with them. And I can start to, to um, add some color to some of them. But I can't do that until I've, I've just wet this area here that's right adjacent to one of the areas that's, that was masked. So I need to allow that to dry. So while I'm waiting, I'm gonna work on this, um, on the tree line in the background a little bit. Um, what I did yesterday is actually pretty good. It, it's a little on the light side, if anything. It looked looked a little dark yesterday, but um, but now that it's dried, it's a good value. Um, there are some dark passages over in this area. Um, there are some some evergreen trees there, some spruce trees or hemlocks or something. But uh, right now, I'm going to paint the boundary between the the wood line and the snow snow covered meadow. Um, across here and I'm going to leave the, the white that's visible between the, the middle ground woodlot and the background woodlot. And I used my number 12 yesterday for, for the background woodlot, which is going to be too big. So I'm going to switch to my, I think I'll try my number eight. And um, once again, I'm going to use my neutral ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. This um, boundary of the, four, of the middle ground woodlot is pretty warm, much warmer than the, than the background, which um, again helps to support the aerial perspective. So this is probably going to be a little cool if anything. And I'm, I'm painting this in as a solid line. It's really not a solid line. It's broken quite a bit, but I, I think what I want to do is to just paint it solid and, and fluid and then um, lift a little bit. And I, I think I want to also inject some, some warmer colors into it as I'm, while it's nice and fluid, I'm going to Inject a little more burnt sienna. And now I'm gonna just use water. I'm gonna stay away from the, the horse's ear. And I'm gonna leave some pass, passages of, of white. Because there is some some snow visible in the in the woods. Injecting some more water over on this side. 
as much to keep it fluid as to dilute it. I do want to dilute it a little bit, but mostly I want to, I want to keep it fluid to allow me time to, to do a little bit of lifting. All right, now, I like that. It's a good value, a good mix of, um, of neutral grays and uh, warmer, warmer colors. I'm crumpling up a, a paper towel. I want to have a nice highly varied stamp and I'm going to just lift with it. That's good. I like that. Um, maybe you can see it's. I, I see there's quite a bit of reflection from the from the water, but um, but I've I've got kind of a modeled. Um, the the areas that I lifted are, are, are quite modeled because of the the uh, irregular folds in, in the paper towel that I use to do the lifting. Um, I'm gonna find a smaller brush. What I want to use? I think I'll use. Uh, fan brush is, is good for what I want to do. What, I, right here, there are some some small shrubs that are kind of poking out of the out of the snow. So a fan brush is like this. Fan brushes can be really challenging. I've, I've used them successfully a couple of times, but most of the time I, I missed the mark with them. So this is my my filbert rake. This is probably a more reliable brush to, to use for what I want to do. Um, so I'm, I'm going to go ahead and use this um, and not take my chances on the on the fan brush. What I want to do is to pull some fine lines out of the pool of, of dilute paint back here. And it's okay if I, I'm, I'm kind of running them together, which is fine because um, this dead vegetation poking out of the snow is, it's uh, coming up from all over the place, both on this back spit and on the nearer spit. Um, most of what's over here is going to be, um, it's in the, in the woods. This, out on the very edges, there's a bunch of, a bunch of low vegetation that's, that is poking out. Um, so that's, that's all I'm concerned with right now. All right, I'm going to let that dry. The rake worked quite nicely. Um, So while I'm waiting for the horse to the side of the horse to dry here, I think I will. I think I'll I'll start adding some shading to the to the little girl's. Uh, she's she's wearing a, a white fuzzy coat. It looks like with a hood, and um, there's some some subtle shading. So I'm, I'm going to tackle that, and I, I'd really like to um, paint some features on their faces today too. Got a long list of things to do. I'm using once again the, the neutral ultramarine blue burnt sienna mix. Once again, this is quite dark quite a bit darker than I want it to be really. But what I'm really looking to do here is to create a bit of a reservoir. The brush that I had was really a little too big. Um, a reservoir that I can then use just 
a wet brush. Pull very dilute paint out. That looks pretty good. I probably should have added some raw sienna to the to the doll's face yesterday too. I didn't think about it, but I'll go ahead and do that now. I have the woman's gloved hands that I didn't paint before. I can't paint them now because I've just painted the front of the little girl's jacket and uh, that's right adjacent to the, to the gloved hand. So my, the side of the horse is, is pretty dry but I, it needs to be bone dry before I, I start removing the the masking fluid so I don't trust that it's dry enough yet so I, I'm gonna I'm gonna start painting some of the the um, the ironwork on the on the sleigh uh, it looks like I I missed a couple of of timbers too they're they're in shadow um, so what I think I'll do that instead um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna repaint the the the, um, the struts that support the runners and and catch the the transverse beams that I missed that go underneath the belly of the sleigh uh, they're they're all everything is darker than what I painted in the last session that I'm going to paint now um, and actually I think I might as well paint the the wooden part of the runners too. There's, there, there's steam bent wood with iron on the on the bottom side. Looking at the photograph, it looks like that's what's what's going on. Um, regardless, I'm gonna I'm gonna assume that that's what it is. So I'm gonna I'm painting with um, with raw sienna right at the moment. It's a little hard to tell what's iron and what's wood in this photograph, although I do have the ability to zoom in and I'm not zoomed in all that far. Let's try doing that. That's a little better. While that's wet, I'm gonna, this is in both of those pieces of wood that I just painted are in shadow. So I'm floating some burnt sienna ultramarine blue mix into it, and I'm. Uh, because I carefully painted the, the line in the first place and, uh, and because it's still wet, I can paint a little less carefully. I, I, I need to be careful not to break the, the surface tension on the, on the edge of my previous passage. But as long as I stay somewhere within it, the, the wetness of the previous passage will help to distribute the paint and um, 
and keep it within the bounds of what I painted previously. It is very easy to break the, the surface tension now. Just put my finger in it. All right, I'm gonna call that good enough and I'll see if I can paint some shadows into what I painted in the last session. Okay, I like that. It's um, subtle, but it's, it uh, adds some some interest to, to that area. Let's uh, see if we can work on the Christmas tree a little bit. For the most part, I like the Christmas tree as I've painted it, but um, I'd like to create some shadows so that it looks kind of flat um, and there are branches that are sticking out in all directions and the, the ones that are pointing towards the top and the bottom are, are pretty convincing but the ones that are that are pointing out um, sort of towards the left are, are a lot less so so um, I'm gonna I've got my my palette of reds and greens here and I think I'm going to go for the, the shadow green, per, perylene green and um, paint in some some shadows. First I, I want to kind of ease the, the transition from from the deep shadow in the in the footwell of the seat to the tree by painting some dark shadows, branch-shaped shadows coming out of that. And then I want to paint some, some shadows to kind of call out some branches in this flat area. I think this may take a, a few layers, although I, I think that's an improvement already. It's a little simplistic though. By building a few layers up, can add a little subtlety to it. That's better. I'll come back to it. Actually, there's a kind of the transition between the red of the sleigh and the tree is awkward too. use this is olive green I think yeah it's gonna be too I think this was my um, sap green that's better I'll come back to that actually I think I'll Put a little bit of blue into some of the deeper shadows right now. A little too blue. A 
leave it alone for now. My wood line is looking better, drier. Yep, it's drying up pretty nicely. Um, yeah, let's uh, remove the masking fluid and see what that looks like. I think it's safe. That feels dry. That feels dry. I think I'm okay. Okay, so to, to remove masking fluid, the, the way that I like to do it is with a finger cot. These I buy from Staples. Any office supply store will have them. Um, they, uh, they're used for, um, for flipping pages by secretaries and, and uh, office workers. Um, but they work very well for removing masking fluid. Um, and uh, they, you, you can use a lot of different tools. A lot of people use um, erasers and crepe, pieces of crepe. Um, so there's there's no one way to do this, but I, I particularly like using this because I, I used to use just my finger and um, I was burning the tip of my finger because I was using so much masking fluid and and having to remove remove it from such large areas. Um, and then it hit me that they have finger gloves. Um, so I picked some up and uh, the, the, they're uh, kind of a sticky compound which which helps and uh, the nubs on them are uh, I've been lifting tree shapes out of the, the tree line in the background. I, I painted the um, the brass work, I, I didn't attempt to, to paint it accurately because I, um, what I'm, the way that I'm going to have to define the, the brass shapes is by painting the negative shapes with darker values. But uh, right now I just, I, I used a scrubber brush to, to lift this line, right, that tree shape right there, that tree shape, and this tree shape here, and I, I then used a one of my riggers, liners, to paint in two very narrow tree shapes of, of just clear water, and I'm I'm giving it time for the for the water to to reactivate the the paint, and I think I'm about there. It's been at least a minute, probably probably closer to two minutes, so I'm gonna lift this, and it did nothing. Well, that was science. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I, I think that if it was a if it was a darker value that I was trying to lift out of it, probably would have worked okay. But because these are are fairly light values, there just isn't enough pigment there to um, to really make a difference. So I've I've switched to my my smallest my number two scrubber brush and I'm going to try to lift a couple of tree shapes out using the tried and true scrubbing method. Scrubbing is reliable, works really well. The problem with it is that it's, um, it's hard to be delicate. It's really difficult to, to lift fine passages. That worked pretty well actually. I'll lift one more just for good measure. Most of the tree shapes in, in these two wood lines, especially the, the nearer wood line, are darker than the, than the areas that the passages that they're going to be over. So. I really don't need to to worry about too many tree shapes, but I would like to have some lighter lighter colored tree shapes as well as the darker ones. All right, 
quite pleased with the way the painting's coming along. So, thank you for watching. If you're enjoying this, I hope you'll share it with people you think might also appreciate it. And uh, please like the video, like my channel, and please subscribe. Thank you very much. Talk to you next time. Bye.